I had moved to Hollywood and was interested in doing stories on actors and productions. And Nicholas Ray, a director from Warner Brothers, invited me to a party in which he introduced me to a young actor by the name of James Dean. Uh, we seemed to get along very well. I had no idea what his accomplishments were, but he invited me to see a screening of East of Eden. And because of that screening, I got extremely interested in doing a story on him. There was something there that I sensed would make an excellent story. At that time in Hollywood, there was a wave of style. It was emanating from the actor's studio, and there was Brando, and there was Paul Newman, and Montgomery Cliff. And I thought, well, just a minute, there's a new one on the horizon. And I explained to him what I wanted to do, and it was to go back to Indiana, where he came from, spend time there, go back to New York, spend time there and come back to Hollywood because the next film he was going to make was with, interestingly enough, Nicholas Ray. And we eventually set a schedule, an itinerary, and we went off to Indiana. And it was a very memorable experience for me, uh, very touching. And I started to work with him in a kind of reconstruction, a visual biography. Dean wasn't famous as yet. He was on the cusp. He liked photography. He was kind of amused by it. And in very many uh, instances, it was a compliment to him that anybody would spend that much time on his life. And uh, nothing like that has ever been done. And till this day, it hasn't been done. It's the strangest thing. And in summation, I didn't know he was going to die. So I didn't know that I had a martyr on my hand or an icon. I was simply concerned with showing what this type of actor experienced in their childhood, you know, who influenced them. Nothing came easy to him. He didn't make friends easily. He just simply needed to push the envelope as far as he could in a relationship. And I was tenacious. I was in many ways equal to his temperament. And it worked out.